a lot of that panic was because Gabriel Jesus was out and we looked at you know his kind of recent record and we looked at his recent injury history and normally when Gabriel Jesus is out it isn't just for one or two games and so we kind of looked at it and we went oh you know we've lost him now how long have we lost him for there was never any clarity around uh, the nature of the problem really I don't think anyway not enough not as much as you normally get and there certainly wasn't a timeline put out into the public domain now I think that was partly because Arsenal were in the market for an attacker and I think if you tell the world that you um, have a real problem with one of your attacking stars then people are going to think well this lot are desperate let's push up the price let's really dig our heels in and it strengthens our negotiating position as sellers or low knees in Chelsea's case with Raheem Sterling. So I understand why Arsenal kept it under wraps. I was saying it the other day when I sort of looked into it and couldn't find the timeline, couldn't find any report giving any real detail around what this problem was. And then I was thinking about the impact of the transfer window as well. I feared the worst. And I wondered if Gabriel Jesus had suffered something a little bit more severe than we'd initially been led to believe. Now, fingers crossed he is on his way back and fingers crossed he'll be available for the North London derby, at least from the bench, because I think Gabriel Jesus still has a ton to offer this Arsenal team. I really, really do. I've been building him up at the start of the season, saying this was going to be a really big year for him. And then he suffers a setback and you're starting to think, oh, like it doesn't matter how good I think this guy is. It doesn't matter how much I rate him. If he can't stay fit, he's no good to us. I get that. Right? I understand why people have that view and, and had that feeling. But I think his dribbling abilities, creativity, the buzz that he can create, the work rate, his versatility, his ability to impact the game from the right, from the left, through the middle, to drop into those deeper pockets. I think all of that is so, so important to us. And I know that Kai Havertz is doing brilliantly up front right now. And, and for many, he's the number one centre forward at Arsenal, um, certainly for me. But to be able to share that kind of role and that burden, I guess, with Gabriel Jesus is going to be helpful to both of them, right? Neither of them have been particularly prolific through their their careers. They've gone through good patches and good spells when it comes to goal scoring, but none of them have ever been in the kind of, I'll produce you 30 goals a season bracket. I've kind of got a bit of confidence that Kai Havertz can go on and become that if he continues uh, the way he's been playing for this Arsenal side and if he continues to be the centre point and focal point etc but to be able to have someone else of Jesus's experience and quality who can come in and out who he can share the role with I think Jesus's ability to cover on the flanks is really underrated as well when you factor all of that in I think he's a really really important player for us and I'm delighted that even if he's not available for the North London derby he is on his way back to fitness and it shouldn't be long before we see him out there playing again wearing the red and white and causing defenders nightmares, which is what Gabriel Jesus, to be fair to him, has made a career uh, of doing.